Hello. Welcome, welcome to art class. Um, today we are going to be creating a celestial um, landscape painting and we're going to be doing this step by step. Um, so we are going to need five colors today. Um, the colors that we're going to need is going to be red paint. Um, so go ahead and put red paint. I've also put uh, yellow paint and um, I have white paint on my palette. So make sure you have those three colors. Um, you're also gonna make sure that you have um, blue paint and black paint. So make sure you have those colors as well. And the first thing that we're gonna need to do is make sure we have our brushes. I'm working with my three brushes um, today, which is a big brush, um, a medium-sized brush, and a tiny brush. And one thing that you are going to do is you're going to flip your canvas so it is um, vertical. So if your canvas is horizontal, go ahead and flip it so it's like this. It's nice and tall. And the first thing that we're going to have to do is pick up our big brush. Um, and using our big brush, we are going to dip it inside of our blue paint. And I'm also going to mix a little bit of black inside of that blue to create a dark blue shade. So I'm mixing both the black and the blue. As you see, my dark blue is still like a blue, so don't use too much black when you do this part. So what we're gonna start to do is fill up our canvas. Um, but instead of filling up our canvas like this, um, I'm gonna start to fill up my canvas with these big streaks. So starting from the top and then I'm just gonna continue to work my way um, down and filling up my canvas like this. So they're like big streaks for our sky. Make sure you're smoothing out the blue so that way you really get that dark blue color, just kind of overlapping all of my blues. So at the end, you're going to have like this, you're going to already start to see this kind of texture on your sky. Um, and that's okay, but you want to make sure that you're covering up all of your canvas too. So it's going to be a lot of blue that you're going to have to make. Thank you. 
Um, now, one thing I like to do is fill in the sides of my canvas too. So if you have sides, you can cover your sides and also make sure um, you're also covering the top of your canvas too. your celestial sky is kind of wrapping around your canvas I'm still working my way down So one thing to keep in mind, um, when you are filling in your canvas, it's okay if you have different shades of blue too. Um, so that's going to happen for you naturally uh, when you put your dark blue down. Sometimes you might even see like some other streaks of lighter blue in there. Um, so that way your sky has a little bit of texture. Um, once you reach a point where your canvas looks like this and it's all filled in, um, we can go ahead and let that dry. And the next part we're going to be working with is using our tiny brush um, to make the outline of our stars. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up my tiny brush. So go ahead and pick up your tinier brush. And what we're going to do is make these rays on our sky. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make two colors. I'm going to mix two colors together. And that's going to be blue and yellow paint. So go ahead and dip your tiny brush in your yellow. And then go ahead and dip it inside of your blue. And then you're going to mix those two together. Um, if you're wondering what type of blue, you can just mix it in with the um, regular blue that you have. So I really don't have any black in this. Um, so if you have to make a new batch, I would suggest um, to do that. So it's just going to be blue and uh, yellow paint to make green. Looks like my green, I want it to be a little bit lighter than the green that I'm getting right now. So what I want you also to do is go ahead and dip your brush in your white paint. And you're going to mix some white inside of that uh, green color. So that's actually going to be three colors um, that you're going to mix together. Um, that's going to be blue, white, and uh, yellow paint. And when you make mix those three colors together, you're going to get like this shade here, which is kind of like a light shade of green. Sometimes it takes a couple tries to get that color. So I would say the amount of yellow and the amount of white um, is a little bit more than the blue. So you really want it to get it to be nice and bright. So don't be afraid to keep re-adding more yellow paint and adding more, um, a little bit more of the white paint to get it to be lighter. 
I can also test it out on my canvas here to see if that is the color, which that's about the green that I want and it shows up. So if you're having trouble and it's not showing up as much, sometimes it means that you just need to mix a little more yellow and a little more white to make it nice and bright. It's like the color of, I would say like a lime. Um, so with your green, it's like a pastel green. Um, you're gonna streak it right here on your sky. So this is like in the middle of my canvas. And what I'm doing is just streaking a little bit of green and you're gonna make multiple lines to do these streaks and kind of working in this direction. Um, so as you see, I have just a little bit of green on the side of my canvas and I kind of streaked it like this. And I'm just gonna leave that part alone. I'm gonna go to the other side of my canvas and this time I'm going to do big streaks. Um, I'm going to start off by making a long streak. Since it is like a celestial sky, it should have some texture to my sky here. And I'm going to continue to make these long streaks until I get to um, the side of my canvas. And as you see, some of the streaks, I'm leaving spaces in between. So that way, my streaks are not just like, you don't really want it to be a block of green. You want it to be kind of like space between the lines. So you kind of see that some of my lines are kind of spaced apart. And just kind of streaking that in the corner here of your um, canvas. Oh, your sky has some green in it. Making sure I'm making big streaks. If it's mixing in a little bit with the blue, that's okay. I'm even going to add a little bit more to this side. So that way my green comes down a little bit more. So I even streaked a little more green on this side of my canvas too. So that's kind of like the goal that you want um, to have is the streaked green on the side. And make sure you're, if you have to make more of that color, make sure you're mixing the white, the yellow, and the blue together to make this uh, pastel green. So that's all of the lines that I'm going to do um, for right now for my green. And the next part is adding on some purple. Um, so you can go ahead and clean your brush. And the next step is taking our brush, our clean brush. And what we're going to do is mix two colors together. Um, so those two colors are going to be blue and red paint. So I'm going to take some of my blue and I'm going to take some of my red and mix those two together. And this creates purple. So when you make this color, at first your purple is going to turn out like a dark shade of purple. Um, so that's kind of like my purple there. And I want it to be kind of like a pastel purple, just like my green. So in order to get it to be pastel, I'm going to take a little bit of white paint now and mix it in with my purple. So that's going to be three colors, um, red, blue, and uh, white paint to make it like this light shade of purple. I, I would say the purple has a little bit of a reddish tone to it. So I, when you're making this purple, use a little more red than your blue. 
I'm gonna show you guys my purple once you make that. So this is like my purple here. Um, it is a pastel purple with more of a reddish tone to it. So I have a lot of red, a little bit of blue and some white paint on my brush. And that's my purple on my palette. Um, so once you make this purple, what you're going to do is put it on your sky. Um, we'll do the same thing that we did with our green. So starting in the middle, I'm going to start to streak this purple right about here. Just kind of slashing the middle part. Some of your lines can be longer and some can be shorter too when you do this part. Like right here, I'm gonna make my purple a little bit longer. And I'm also overlapping on top of my green slightly. big lines so when you're doing the purple part it's important to just kind of like stay in the middle of your canvas and continuing to make lines but try to stay in the middle so that way your purple is kind of touching the green but it's more so like in the middle of your um canvas so that's like how my purple looks in the middle and just continuing to add to it a little bit more when i do this purple i'm not um trying to cover up my blue sky So once you get to a point where you feel like it's enough lines, it's important to kind of take a look back and see if there needs to be more purple. Um, so I would say that's more than enough purple that I've put down. So once you get to a point where it's like this, then you have lots and lots of purple lines in the middle, then you can start to let it dry. So the next part is adding on, um, let's see, we can work on our mountains in the meantime. So uh, it's important to make sure that this bottom part is kind of dry. Um, so like right here where we put the blue down, it's pretty dry. So go ahead and clean your brush and you're going to dip it inside of your white paint. And still using our tiny brush here. And what I'm going to do with my tiny brush is create a straight line um, that's closer to the very bottom of your canvas. And you're going to try to make this line kind of straight too. So that's my line and that's with the white paint. That's like the bottom of our mountain top. So once you have this straight white line, you can go over it a couple of times just to make sure it's straight for you. We're gonna work on our mountain tops. So one 
important way to work on a mountaintop when you do a landscape painting is think about uh, triangles. And that's kind of like the shape that the mountains are going to be. So starting on this side of my canvas, I'm going to create a big triangle. So it's kind of like starting from one side and then curving down to the other side. I'm going to do a few of these. So once you make the first one, you're going to do another one. And this one's going to shape down. It's OK if your purple mixes in a little bit when you're making the outline. But that's kind of like my mountain. So I made the first triangle, and then I made this one next to it. And you're going to make like this kind of shape here. So that way it appears like your mountain is behind the first mountain. After you do these two mountains, you're going to do another mountain doing the same thing and putting it behind the first one. And then you're going to make another mountain. And this one is actually, I would say, you're going to go pretty much to the edge of your canvas when you make this last mountain. I would say it's bigger than the other um, mountains together. This one kind of curves on the side. Once you finish with the outline of your mountains, you can go ahead and start to fill in your mountains with your white paint. So that way your mountains look like they have snow on them. If it's easier for you, you can also use your medium sized brush to fill in your mountains, or you can stick with the tiny one. Now, as I do this, um, some of my purple paint is mixing in with my white paint, which is actually we can use that to create shading too. So if that happens to you, you can just keep layering and um, allow that purple to kind of create a little bit of shading for you. Our mountains don't have to be pure white. So there's even put a little bit of that um, white paint on the side here and my purple's kind of showing up. afraid to keep layering too to make your white a little bit brighter because when you first put it down sometimes it can be a little bit see-through still
going over all of my mountains and I have a little bit of texture in my mountains because I have some of that purple paint even mixing in on the sides so you can do that too to make your mountains look a little bit like they have um, some shadow to them once you finish with that part um, you can go ahead and uh, clean your brush. And what we're going to do next is work on the rest of our um, celestial sky. So what I'm going to do is go back and dip my brush inside of the white paint. And what I'm going to do is kind of create this like design um, on my sky here. So starting, I would say, closer to... Um, the very top part of your mountain, you're going to create these streaks with your white paint. It's pretty much, I would say, in the middle of my um, canvas. Using my white, I'm going to continue up on top of my purple and on top of my green to create almost like a C shape. using these streaks here. What I mean by a C is it's kind of like an open C of streaks. Imagine like shooting stars. So that's what you're going to continue to do. Making lots of these streaks here. It's important not to put too much white paint down. Um, just be like select foam where you put your white streaks because I don't want it to overpower my other colors. So I'm really concentrating on making sure that these white streaks, white streaks stay thin as I do this. And just being careful of the mountain too. You're almost using the paint to like sketch in a way. Almost pretend you have a pencil and you just want to kind of sketch it out. So that's kind of like the uh, shape that you want. You want to have like this big C shape in the middle with your white paint and just uh, kind of leaving some spaces in between some of the streaks too when you um, do this part. And if your purple mixes in with your brush or your, your green, um, that's totally fine as well. So now that I have my streaks on my sky, um, I'm going to let this part dry. I'm not going to put any more white paint. I think that's more than enough white. Um, and then the next part is adding on some yellow paint. Uh, for the yellow, I want you to mix your yellow and your white together uh, to create a light shade of yellow, uh, which I'm doing right now and mixing both my yellow and my white together. Still using our tiny brush, we're going to add some yellow streaks. So going right on top of the white, you're going to start to streak in the same direction, um, a little bit of yellow. And I'm going to use this white to help me along as I streak my yellow paint onto my painting here. 
there is a big shooting star on this side of my painting. So I've taken my yellow and white and just streaked a big long line on um, this side of my canvas. So now I have like this big yellow um, line right here. And then I've also put some yellow on top of that C shape that we made earlier um, to make my white. This part is really cool because you see all your colors kind of coming together. And still be careful with my yellow paint. Make sure that you are only putting it in certain areas of your painting, like in the middle, um, and leaving like an empty space right here. I'm also working my way in near my mountains now. And just be careful as you do this. It's okay if you go over your mountain slightly. You could always um, touch it up later. So there is a lot more yellow, um, as you see down here, near this, these two mountains. So it's important to keep streaking your yellow and white and just kind of being careful around and making this outline here. So that way your yellow um, appears like it's behind your mountain. But just remember that this is your sky and it's behind it. Once you get to a point where you have as much yellow as I do, so I have a lot of yellow in this area, um, I don't think I'm going to add any more. So you could start to let your painting dry once you get to a point where you have, you have this long yellow line and then you have all of these yellow streaks. And the next part is cleaning your brush and just retouching up your mountains here. So I'm guessing by now you have maybe made the streak go into your mountain potentially. So um, go ahead and clean your brush and pick up uh, your white paint again and just go over your mountain top to make sure that you didn't lose that uh, outline. Just have to touch it up just a little bit. So now I've touched up my mountain. So now it appears like my streaks are behind my mountain by putting my white paint only on the top edges of the um, triangle shape. So the next part is going ahead and cleaning your brush again. And what we're going to do is work on adding our moon in. So make sure your brush is really clean and you have your white paint on your uh, tiny brush again. And you're going to make a small circle for your moon. At the top part of your canvas going to be like a, the size of a quarter, I would say, to make your moon. And then I'm also filling in my moon. So it's nice and bright. Feel free to layer a couple times to make it even brighter. So that's my moon, um, and I've made sure that it's on top of my purple. So 
like a size of a quarter. And the next part is adding on some stars. So using your tiny brush, you're gonna go about and start to add tiny little stars. Now in order to do the stars, you're gonna make like these tiny little um, dashes here. And make sure you make the lines really tiny. I made a tiny star. As you see, I'm making like a cross shape. And you're going to make one line, and then you're going to make another line to make a star that's kind of near your, your moon. So that's one way to make stars. Another way is to make dots. So if you find it easier, you could also do just like little dots and putting that all around your sky. Make sure you're being careful to not put too much paint on your brush when you're doing the dots. And I would say whenever you do stars, you don't want to put them exactly in a row. You kind of want to just put them at random spots throughout. And you're just going to lightly touch your canvas and put that all around to make your stars. You can also make the sides appear like they have stars on them and the top of your canvas. Looks really cool when I put the dots on the top too. So now that I have enough dots for my stars, I'm also going to go back and start making those cross stars too. So making little X's or crosses, you can do that throughout your your sky. And just putting them at a random spot throughout your painting. That's kind of like the stars that I've made in crisscross. I'll give you a little close-up view of that. So continuing to fill up my night sky here. We even have a shooting star. Um, now, in order to do the shooting star, I'm going to do like a dot, but slightly a little bit bigger. So if you notice, it's just a little bit bigger than all the other dots that I made. And you can make it about this much distance away from your uh, moon. And since it's a shooting star, what you're going to do is wipe your brush if you have a napkin or you have your apron. Wipe your brush on that just to get your brush to be a little bit drier so it doesn't have too much paint on it. And you're just going to kind of make this streak at the back of your um, dot to make it appear like your star is just shooting across your um, canvas there. So I made it kind of like a C shape um, to make a shooting star. And then going back in and then re-putting the dot back 
with my white paint. So that way I have the dot and then I have this streak um, behind my dot to make it look like a shooting star. It's a really cool way to make a shooting star there. So once you finish with your shooting stars and you have as many stars as I have, I have plenty of stars, so I think that's more than enough. Um, we can go ahead and clean our brush. We're going to add on some of our trees. So what I'm going to do is clean my brush and then dip it inside of my black paint. We're going to make some pine trees. Still using my tiny brush. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a line. In this line, I would say it's going to be about this tall. So make it like so it's in the middle of your first mountain with your uh, black paint. And you're going to do another line that's going to be a little bit shorter. And this one is like closer to um, the edge of your canvas. After you make these two lines, what you're going to do is create another line right here. And I'm just going to start to etch out these lines here and sketch them out. So I'm going to continue to make lines. Some are shorter and some are longer to make my trees because pine trees should be different sizes. Starting to add on and make lots and lots of lines. So as you see, I've already had, I've already made a few more lines and just kind of dragging them up. As you see that these ones are a little bit taller and then the other ones are shorter. So you can make the lines kind of like a variety of shapes um, and sizes. And continuing to add lines until I reach the side of my canvas. So that we have plenty of pine trees. When you get to this side of your canvas, you're gonna make your tree, this is actually a really tall tree. So I'm going to drag this line up to go past my mountains. So now I have a really tall line right here going past my mountain. I'm going to do two, two tall trees like that. So these two trees are going to be the same size and going past your mountains. And around these tall trees, we have smaller trees. So these trees are just sitting in front of the mountain and are a little bit shorter. So you can kind of do the same thing you're doing with um, the smaller lines. I'm just kind of streaking lots of small lines throughout. Making sure they're reaching the bottom of your canvas too. It kind of looks like that. So you have these tall ones and then you have this one. Um, and then it looks like we have one that is going past these two mountains. So I'm going to make like another really tall one right here. Um, it's a slightly a little bit shorter than the two tall ones. You're going to drag up that line, too. So now that we have all of our lines for our trees, we're going to start to make the pine trees, the pine needles. So one way to make pine needles is to think of a Christmas tree shape. That's kind of like the shape that you want to stick with as you do this. So starting on, we'll start on the taller one. I'm going to start to make these lines going the opposite direction. As you see, I've already made a few. 
And one thing about pine trees is they start off really skinny and then just like a Christmas tree, they get bigger and bigger as they go down. So as you do this, you're gonna create these thin lines. Um, they're actually horizontal lines to create your pine trees. And I'll do this tree so you can see what I'm talking about. It's okay if white paint mixes in too from your mountains or other colors. You can even make some of the lines kind of different. They don't have to be super straight, just to make it look more realistic. So as you see, as I've gotten down, I've made the lines a little bit longer and left a few spaces in between. So that's kind of like how my tree looks. And as you see, I've even made some of the lines look a little like they're coming down a little bit because imagine like maybe the tree has snow on it and it's a little bit like weighing heavy. So they can be kind of imperfect. Um, I'm going to do that to all of my trees. So making these horizontal lines starting at the very top, they get really skinny and then they get really bigger as they go down. Um, just like a Christmas tree shape. You can even make some of your trees to have like a triangle shape. So this is another way to make um, pine needles is making the lines appear like they're curving down a little bit instead of being straight. So that way some of your trees are different. All of all of my lines to have these pine needles on them. Just kind of keep layering. There's no uh, no uh, different way. You can find your own technique to do this. And if you make a mark that shouldn't be, that's okay. Like trees are even better when you're making lines that are just kind of different than one another, and you're making lots and lots of texture just like this. And continuing to fill up all of your trees. even the tiny, tiny lines. even working on the taller tree. And the more you layer, as you see with the lines, it gets a little bit easier too. So once you get the hang of it, you can just keep on layering with lots and lots of lines making your trees nice and full. Um, don't forget about these ones on the side. So all of the lines 
um, you want to fill with these horizontal lines. I'm going to put a little bit more lines at the bottom just so it looks like my um, bottom of my canvas has a little bit like, imagine it's like the ground. So I put a little bit more black paint on the bottom. And you can do that too and just kind of making these dashes to fill in the bottom part. If you want to paint the bottom of your canvas black, you can. That would be, that would look really cool. Um, for your trees. And you can even make the trees appear like they're coming to the side too. You can paint the side of your trees, the side of your canvas. So once you get to a point where it's like, you see like most of your lines have lots and lots. You're, the goal is not to cover all of this completely. So you're gonna see a little bit of that blue sticking out. And that actually looks really nice. I, I prefer when the blue sticks out. Um, so that way it appears like my sky is in the back part of my trees. Um, so just be sure to not put too much black paint down where you're not seeing your mountains. You still wanna see pieces of your mountains um in between like all of the foliage that you've put down uh, once you get to a point that it's pretty filled up um you can go ahead and clean your brush and that will be the completion of our painting so uh one thing about this painting is it's awesome to sign it with a lighter color so uh once you finish go ahead and clean your brush and then you're going to dip it inside of your uh, white paint, or I suggest maybe like yellow paint. And you can wait till it dries or you can just sign it um, right on top of your tree like this. Make sure everyone knows that you did that celestial sky painting. And thank you for joining me for this landscape painting adventure. Um, I hope you enjoy this painting and please um, work on finishing your painting and posting it on the classroom. Thank you. Have a great day.